scriptures in the Quran, how we're supposed to treat his creation, he also gave us a will. And if we don't use what he's given us to make the right choices, to follow his instructions, it's going to be on us. And that's why I decided to do this nutrition piece. So that we don't put ourselves in a predicament where we wind up losing things, our, our freedom, our mobility, our sanity, because, you know, when you're going through as much pain as this particular individual is going through, it works on your psyche. Because there's only so much the medical doctors can do for you. There's only so much. And it works on your psyche, so not only is this individual going through physical pain and physical challenges, they're going through emotional and, and mental challenges. And why? Because they neglected the vessel, the vehicle that Allah has given them. Now, is it too late for them? No. There are some things that they can do so that their life doesn't have to be this bad. But are they taking advantage of that? That's the purpose of this class. So that we can learn the things that we need to know and we can share it, inshallah, with others. So this individual who might hear one of our voices, might see one of us talking about what we're doing for ourselves, can inshallah be inspired to do more for themselves so that they don't have to continue to suffer unnecessarily. Because Allah doesn't make us suffer. He does not make us suffer. Allah brings the good things our way. What we feel, what we experience that's negative, Allah doesn't bring that to us. Now he tells us he's going to test us. But it's our decisions that starts to bring those bad things down on us. That's not our God doing that. So don't be, woe is God, where is he, I need him. Some of this you brought on yourself. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Oh Allah, guide me so that I can get out of this predicament. Oh Allah, help bring me answers. That's the better prayer. That's the better prayer. And so I pray Allah that he uses me today as a tool to help you come up with better answers. To help us, because I'm going to be learning too, come up with better answers so that we can do a better job at taking care of this vessel that Allah has given us. So again, that's the purpose of this workshop. So, Nafis read this during the um, kutbah, and I thought it was important to actually incorporate it in with this presentation and start off with it, just to remind us. I know I'm speaking to the choir and a lot of these issues, but I just want to bring some stuff current to our minds and to make sure that we are, 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 are at least focusing in on certain things throughout the presentation. Allah is He who raised the heavens without any pillars that we can see. Now just because those pillars can't be seen by us doesn't mean those pillars are not there. There are some things that we have no knowledge of, but our deity made sure that those things were there, whether we know about those things or not. Continuing. Then He established Himself on the throne and he has subjected the sun and the moon. Each one runs its fixed, its course for a term appointed. And he doth regulate ALL affairs. He doth regulate all affairs. I need you to keep that in mind while I go through this. Explaining the signs in details for us to see. For us to sit and learn from. That ye may believe with certainty in the meeting with your Lord. Now, my husband mentioned this. I believe he mentioned this today during Jumon. He said that if, Imam Muhammad said that if he knew that there was a certain point when he was going to leave us, he would work extra hard to make sure he does everything he can while he's here. Because once you cross over that pathway and you make your transition, it's too late to fix some things. And one of the things that we should be aware of that we're supposed to be doing is serving as a Khalifa. And that's not a Khalifa just for what's going on outside. We're told throughout our, our religion and the teachings of our religion that it starts right here. It starts with self. Because if your body is not in shape, a mother, she can't take care of her offspring. A father, he can't be that leader in his home. 
and take care of the members of his family. A, a, a person who's in charge of a business, a person who's a, who's a professional doing whatever, he or she can't do that if their body is not in shape. And if you're going through certain things where you've got certain disorders that are pulling on you, the parts of your body that's healthy, they get weaker. And then you make yourself susceptible to other disorders. So it starts with us taking care of self. Our spiritual self, we have that intact, inshallah, with the teachings of our deen. Our economic self, you need resources to work with. Imam Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, made sure that we understood the importance of being entrepreneurs and taking care of our own needs. Who did Prophet Muhammad marry? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lady Khadija, what was her profession? And she didn't just take care of her personal needs, she even hired individuals to help them secure their own economic needs. See, this is not by accident that these things are happening. Again, looking at Allah's signs. So we have the spiritual peace, which also helps to protect the emotional peace, if you're doing it right. We have the economic peace, and if it's in line with the spiritual peace, it'll be done correctly and we won't run into situations like our government has run into. We have the physical peace, and we've been neglecting that. We're so busy that we don't have time to take care of those basic needs. And like I said, if those needs falter, if we don't take care of this physical structure that we're in, we're gone. Who can we help? You're on an airplane, and then a steward, stewardess is going through their piece on safety and, and guiding you about what to do on the plane in the event of an emergency. What do they say do when the oxygen mask falls? Anybody? What do they say do? What are you supposed to do when the oxygen mask falls? Cover your face first before you try to help anyone else. We need to take care of this. Person. There's no way of looking around that. And the idea that Allah says to us in His scripture that He's put things in place as pillars that we can't even see is a key to what's going to be presented. There are hidden supports that we cannot even encompass, that we can't even recognize. He's the ultimate. He sees. He knows. So he's put these supports in place. Even though we don't even know that we need them, they're still there. There are rules and regulations of how things should be. And all of this has been established by the Supreme Being, by Allah. And he's given us signs. And the more we pay attention to his signs, the more we see how all these pieces come together. Now, the focus of today is to talk specifically about the problem. Because I can go through all of this stuff about what's going on and what we should be doing and whatnot, but if you don't have anything to reference it to, then you might not see the value in what I'm going to be sharing with you. So today, I want to make it clear what some of the problems are. And as I go through this, I want you to think about something. Let me start before I even go any further. I gave you a white card. If you don't have one, let me know. I want you to put on that white card the number of people that you know that have the following disorders. I'm going to go slow to give you a chance to count. I'm going to name the disorder, write the disorder down, and then think. Family, friends, just do some counting. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. And if you can tell me in your counting if this person's an African American or not, it would be helpful. Okay, it might be a friend, relative who's not an African American, but I need to know if they're an African American. So what I want you to do is just put a circle around it if it's an African American. So as you, as you know, if you're putting the numbers down, if these are all African Americans, put a, a circle around that group, and if you have some additional ones in that group who are not African Americans, just add the number. Just put another number there, but don't circle it. All right, first disorder is diabetes. Write down the word diabetes and do a count. How many people do you know that are diabetics? And it doesn't matter how close they are to you or how far they are away from you. Just how many? 